Well, we're going to play around with the G4 cube some more. Now, the last thing I did is I put that autonomous fan controller board in it, and that thing just works fantastic. And we also have our upgraded NVIDIA card in it, and that makes everything run very, very smooth. And so the next thing we're going to do, now a while back I did just a little quick video about upgrading the uh, original processor that we have in it. Actually, the one I have in it now is a 600 megahertz processor. I have a friend that uh, mods these. So I upgraded this machine from a 450 to a 600 megahertz. It has a newer type of G4 processor on it and it does make a huge difference. I had about a 50% speed gain in this thing. However, I feel the need for speed. So I got that 1.6 gigahertz Sonnet Encore board. I could not get it to work. I never even got a chance to install it in, an, in the uh, cube here because this would not take the firmware update. You have to do the firmware updates to make that before you put the card in to make that work. I mean, I tried for weeks. I had lots of good suggestions. I tried it of no avail. It just did not work. So I talked to the guy that I got that card off of and he has this 1.4 Sonnet Encore ST card. It's a 1.4 gigahertz card. And guess what? We're going to put it in it. Now, the danger is, I have been waiting for three months to get this Stratus updated VRM board in it. And it has a lot more power and a lot more amperage. And I have the stock original board in it. So, there's always a risk. These do run a lot hotter. Now, I do have that 12 volt fan in here and that thing really pushes this air through this thing like a wind tunnel when it ramps all the way up. It's never ramped up though, it just barely kicks on because this processor that's in it now runs very, very cool. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this updated one in and cross our fingers and uh, hope we don't have a meltdown. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put this board in it, we're gonna take the old one out and we're gonna put this one in it and obviously I'm not going to go detail to detail on how to take this thing apart, uh, but I am going to uh, take it apart and I'll show you the uh, processor that's in it. More in just a minute. Okay, so we got the cube apart. Now one thing I do want to show you, this is the main logic board. This is the uh, Ethernet board right here. Now, on some of these cubes, uh, they also offered a gigabit Ethernet. Uh, it was custom built. And man, I would love to get my hands on one of these because get this off 10 base from 10 base 100 to gigabit Ethernet would really, really make it sing on the internet. But anyway, yeah, so that's, that's a future thing. If I ever find one of these, uh, basically it just plugs right in. And uh, I'm assuming that the other one's do the same thing. I'm not sure what they changed in the components. I've been doing a lot of research, haven't been able to find it yet. But one of these days, if I do come across one, I will feature it and I will put it on this thing. And so yeah, and that's what the main logic board looks like. It's very, very tiny. Uh, basically there's this, um, yeah. So. And this is the upgraded uh, 600 megahertz board that I have in it now. And it's got a, uh, has a more modern 7410 chip on it that runs much, much cooler. And this has uh, been a great little board, works fantastic. And you can just kind of see the differences here on these two boards here. Again, this is not the stock board. This is a 600 megahertz board. And this is the Sonnet 1.4 gigahertz board. And you can see there's some obvious differences on it there. And then if we flip it over. Let's 
You'll see the other side here, how that looks. This one's still got the uh, thermal paste on it here. And you can see, they uh, again, they, they look a lot different there. So we're going to put this one in. And before I put this one in, I'm going to show you here. This is the uh, thermal die here that that goes on. You can see the thermal paste on it. But what I want to do is I want to take this plate off too because this also has thermal paste on it and I've never ever taken this off. So I'm going to take this off and I'm going to repaste everything. So that way we get maximum cooling with this thing. You can see the, the base fan I have here. This is a 12 volt fan and the autonomous fan controller is right there. You can see the wing nuts on it there and it sits happily in there. So yeah, so we're going to take and we're going to do clean thermal paste off. We're going to pull this plate off and we're going to repaste it. Okay, so we have everything cleaned up. I've already taken that one plate off and thermal pasted it to the main cooling fins and or the heat sink rather I should say. We have the nice 1.4 gigahertz processor upgrade board and you can see I've never seen a purple CPU die. Maybe that's something Sonnet did. I've never seen that before. Got that purple power. I have the heat sink off of it because it's come out of a uh, power Mac but it uses the same AGC type board. And uh, but yeah, it's kind of neat. A little purpley looking there. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some thermal paste on here and we're gonna put this back together. And like I said, that's a nice looking card. It really is. Okay, so we are gonna put some thermal paste on it here. Love the Arctic Silver, that's my personal choice of favorite of thermal paste. I like it. And hopefully I got enough. So I'm pretty sure I do. Everybody has their own method of thermal paste. What they think is too much or what's not, not enough. So let me get this here and we're going to ooze a little bit here. I'm just going to kind of slide it around here a little bit. I'm not going to squeeze any more out. I'm just going to make sure that the die is all covered up here. Okay, very good. And I'm going to put just a little bit on this thing too because I, I have no idea. Um, you know, there could be a little gap or something in here. And I definitely don't want to have any issues. So I'm just kind of moving it around here. And that's more than enough. That's probably too much, but that's all right. Like I said, I'd rather have too much than not enough. Because I've seen CPUs burn up because somebody didn't put enough on it. And this is non-conductive, by the way. So if you get it on something that's not supposed to be on there, it's not going to short anything out. At least I've never done it, but that's through claim. It's supposed to be non-conductive, and we're going to put it back together now. Okay, so we just about got this all back together, and we've got the 1.4 Sonnet upgraded CPU card in it. And I'm just putting the last finishing touches on it, and I think what I will do is when I power this up, I'm not going to put it in the case. I'm going to leave it out of the case because I just want to see how hot that VM board gets. And so yeah, so I'm really excited to see if this thing works. Should, but like I said, I got to be real careful with it because I'm really pushing it with the uh, upgraded card in there because that does draw quite a bit more juice as far as amperage. Um, if it's just idling, it's fine, but like if we do anything like playing a game or something like. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go 
upstairs and we're going to hook this up and we're going to power it up and see what happens. And I really would like to thank Sean from Action Retro for mentioning uh, me on my channel that I put that autonomous controller board in there. And thank you, Sean, very much. I really appreciate it. And we, he's my friend. And also all the guys at Mac Yak, if you ever listen to their podcast, they're a great bunch of people. And look at their web channel. They have their podcast every Thursday. However, they're taking a couple weeks off because of the holidays, which I totally understand because I do the same thing. So anyway, yeah, we got the... Uh, graphics card back in it, all the RAMs back in it, and we're going to go power it up and see what happens. Okay, so we are ready to turn the cube on, and hopefully it doesn't blow up. Um, so anyway, everything's all back together. I went ahead and put it back in its enclosure. Um, we're just going to hope for the best here, but it should be okay because like I said, we got plenty of cooling, that autonomous fan controller when that processor gets too warm, it's going to kick on right away and it'll ramp up as much as it needs to. So we're going to try it. So we're going to get it going here to actually plug this in. And we're going to boot into Leopard here. That's a very good sign right there. And we're getting video, so that's good. And it's starting to boot up here. And it does take a little while here. This is first boot. It's probably uh, figuring everything out. There we go. Boom, we are in Leopard, we are booted up. Nice, yes, I know the clock's not set because I had it all apart here. Let's see, oh, look at that. that dock runs really nice and smooth there. Let's go about this Mac here. I'm gonna zoom in here. And you can see it's a 1.4 gigahertz power PC processor. 2 megabyte L3 cache. Nice. And you can see we're running the latest version of Leopard. I am going to put uh, the beta version of Snow Leopard back on this. I just want to play with it and see how much better it performs after we're doing the CPU upgrade. But anyway, yeah, so great. Um, now, I did do a Geekbench test on the 600 megahertz processor. And I don't know if I want to do a Geekbench test right now because that puts a lot of stress on the processor. And like I said, I don't have that beefed up board yet for the voltage board. So this is the results that I did on the 600 megahertz board. And you can see, let me see if I can make this bigger here. There we go. All right, that's a little better. Processor integral performance scored was 182. The floating point unit was 209. Memory performance was 160. Bandwidth was 98. So we've got a total score of 178. And let's see here. And you can see all this other stuff here. Gives you all these other things here. Floating point source there. That goes to the uh, graphics card there, which this has a screaming graphics card in it, which is very nice. And big. I can play Wolfenstein 2 on it, and this thing I can do at the highest frame rate, and the thing is just buttery smooth. It's pretty, pretty neat is we are going to Geekbench on this. So we're going to see how this works here. And like I said, the fan's basically just idling. And I can feel the cube. It, it's very, very cool on the edges. So that's good. It's not hot at all. So that's good. 
this fan's doing a great job keeping it cool and like I said as this temperature creeps up on his CPU this fan will ramp up and it's a 12 volt fan and like I said this thing will scream at the top of its lungs when it's ramped way up there even though it's a quiet fan wow look at that 566 let's look at the other one here <laughs> look at that 178 566 holy cow I mean look how much faster everything is here compared to that and I mean this was a huge jump from going to from that 450 megahertz stock board to the 600 wow look at that floating point unit 556 wow let's see what else we got here all right let's see here You can see the difference in the L2 cache and L3 cache on this here. Let's see what this score was here. Huh. 766 versus 182. See now this uh, processor gets to utilize that higher graphics card too, which is nice. Anyway, so our upgrade is very successful. Now, there's a gentleman out there uh, that doesn't like the RGB lights that Sean at Action Retro put in his cube. And I'm not going to mention any names. I told him that I will put a regular Apple logo light in this. It'll be white, just like the traditional ones. And I'm kind of thinking how I'm going to do it. So that's going to be the next video coming up. And also, uh, what's coming up this month is the G4 Cube Chronicles. That's going to be a new monthly video series. And I'm very excited about it. I've already got somebody lined up for the interview all the way from Canada. Yeah, so it's going to be, hope you guys like it. Anything and everything you want to know about cubes. So anyway, guys, hope you uh, like this video. I really appreciate it. Uh, please give me a thumbs up. Please hit the subscribe button and click the bell. I really appreciate it. We're on MeWe, we're on Twitter. You can always reach out to me. So this has been a very successful upgrade. And thank you guys very much for watching this. And you guys have a great holiday season. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.